Hello, everyone, and welcome to an all new episode of the latest thread. Today, our hot topic is all about stitching around applique. We have a ton of gorgeous quilts from all of us to show you and share some tips and ideas um, for you when you're quilting with applique or around applique. So does anybody have anything to draw or to, to mention before we get right into our big photo album? Yeah. No. I know we've got lots to say with lots of pictures, so we might as well have the visuals to go along with it, right? Right. So let's just dive right in here. There we go. Okay. So this is um, actually it was the client's first applique quilt. I thought she did rather well. And I know I've shown this before in another episode, but it was appropriate for this one, I thought. So um, when we quilt applique quilts, especially for others, you know, there's, it, it's always good to ask what the client's expectations are in regards to the applique. Is it okay to quilt inside the applique? Because some people still believe that you can't. And then if it's a large applique, you know, it, it just poofs out. And I think that when you add some quilting within the applique, it makes it look more realistic. As for example, you know, the birds look more realistic as I went inside, like just barely around the wing or just doing a little detailing. The same with the flower, it makes the applique look you know, more alive, I guess. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a fine balance between having the applique being like a, a forefront element of the piece. And if you quilt it too much, then it becomes part of like the one dimension background. Yeah. Correct. Right? So, so a little balance. can go a long way, usually. You know, and you have to figure out based on the scale, the size of the applique, you know, how much but yeah I mean that's the focal point of the quilt so it needs to stay in the foreground as Sharon mentioned. And this is an example um, that is applique but a, an example of an edge to edge and she you know wanted to do an edge to edge on that. And I think it works rather well. So you have options in regards to um, what type of quilting you can do on an applique. But in this case, I thought it worked okay because the fabrics are busy, you know, and it's really large. So therefore the applique part still stands out. It's not taken away with quilting through it. But, you know, something like that, it usually is really all about preference. And this is another example. This is a wool applique quilt. And I actually do quite a bit of those. I know Sharon, you do too. Um, and those are just a different beast, I guess I wanna say, because they're physically more challenging because you talking about, and this one wasn't as challenging because there was not as many uh, decorative stitches and layers upon layers of wool um, because, you know, it's harder to push the machine through, you know, across those layers. But I like what you can achieve with the quilting with wool applique because the wool takes on the thread so much more differently than a cotton fabric. The trick on those for me is to start on the inside out. If I wanna do the detailing, I start on the very inner part of the wool applique. So 
because if I work from the outside in, I'm going to push that wool fabric that's a lot of times more stretchy to the inside, and then I will no longer be able to, you know, get to the inside because the foot can only go over so much thickness. And speaking of foot, if you're uh, fortunate enough to have the um, approach foot system from Gamble, then you can use your little itty bitty trapanto foot and you can get much nicer into those thick areas. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to add anything, Sharon. Well, that trump trapanto foot is in the original quick change set as well. Right. So anybody it was also on the original, on the original, original screw on feet, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, they're super helpful. Um, the only thing I was going to say was that um, when I first started doing these wool applique quilts, I, I was treating them the same as I was doing with all my other custom stuff by doubling up my batting, doing the 80-20 layer and then the wool. And um, recently in the last couple of years, I've just completely eliminated the second layer of batting and I just use one layer of 80-20. And I just find it so much easier to, to go over everything. And it's not, yeah. so there's already layers as it is, right? And you still get a beautiful um, a dimension out of it just because of the fact that the applique is bigger and the quilting is smaller and uh, there's more body and detail in the, in the yeah. wool. Look at all that embroidery. It's gorgeous. So that's where your eye goes anyway. So right. yeah, really pretty. And this was another example of what I was talking about when you have the large, you know, applique. You know, it's tricky to find something that's rather simple. So you don't take away, you know, from the applique. This one had a little, uh, on the inside, a little hand embroidered and that fabric was, the background was linen. So I still went in there, they were like little <coughs> bird type things and still just added a line or two just so it wouldn't just hang there. And again, the linen itself is, um, it takes on the thread very differently again compared to the cotton and the wool. So it's interesting when you work with different materials, you know, how it shows up differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That linen has like a matte, mm -hmm. matte finish to it. It's nice. I love how quilting looks on the linen. I don't know why. I just love it. And this was somebody's quilt that wanted the background just like that, but in regards to the applique, you know, there's so much going on. And sometimes, you know, it's what do you do? I had quilted actually a few of those and I didn't want them to be all the same. So I just did crisscross lines through the applique. I did ditch around all the applique shapes and I didn't go through the bird that's on top. So it definitely still puts focus onto the applique. You know, some people may not like that look. She she liked it. So, you know, different options for different people, I guess. Well, if you didn't do that, you'd have had to figure out something else to quilt inside on top of that applique because some of those mm -hmm. circles are pretty big. Right. So then, then you have to figure out what to do inside there. But I thought it was important to ditch around the applique. You know, and that's another point we should bring up. You know, if you... Because they, the shapes of the applique should be, I think, defined. Mm -hmm. So even on the other ones, like the first one we showed with the birds and the flowers, you know, I always um, ditch around the, those applique elements, you know, to make them stand out individually. I think that's important. Yeah, well, there was a really, really great post in one of the Gamel Facebook groups recently, and a gal had actually posted a picture of, and it was like intense applique, lots of vines and leaves that were bending over and flowers and stuff. And she had done all her background fill, but she had asked, was asking, should I, uh, should I go back and ditch this? And I piped in, several others did that, you know, yeah. 
Um, and she posted a picture afterwards in the comments of what it looked like. And I mean, it's so worth it. Did you guys see that post? Mm-hmm. No. I but don't it, think so. It also depends on budget. Sure. Because, huh. I mean, some some quilts, you have 12, 15 hours of just ditching. And mm-hmm. if they don't have that that money in their budget, a lot of times I'll just, as I'm doing my background fills, I'll just mm-hmm. faux ditch, I call it. I just hit it with my background fill the best I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's another good point you brought up, Karen, because people approach that differently. I know that I do it the other way. If I get a quilt like that, whether it's a wool applique or any other applique, I will do all the ditching first. Because for me, it it seems that it's smoother to then go do the fill or whatever afterwards without having to stop and looking, you know, did I miss this stitch or didn't I? Plus then it's stabilized throughout the quilt because mm-hmm. I don't stabilize like you do. Mm-hmm. So again, there's different ways of doing it, I guess. Yeah, always. There's always 72 different ways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think the difference I'm hearing between your two processes there, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, is that Um, Karen's referring to there's no budget for ditching so I'm going to try to ditch it as best as I can as I go and try to choose designs that I can sneak into the ditch as I go and then Ava's um, method is you're doing both right so you you do have the budget for that so obviously that's optimal right if you have time to do that so but yeah I definitely if if the budget is not there I'm going to try to choose something feathers are really good for that because you can just like use the applique as kind of a spine where you can kind of yeah. come down and sneak and then bump back out again. Yeah. So. On to Jody. Yeah, so I am the opposite. Like, so I would never probably go through an entire quilt and ditch it first or last. I like <laughs> to do it all at one time. So I'll like go up along the spine. I'm adding those leaves as I go. So I'm getting all the area quilted at once. I don't want to have to go. I don't ever want to look at the whole quilt again. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, I don't want to get to the bottom. When I get to the bottom, I want to take it off, not be like, okay, let's go back all the way to the top. (laughs) And, you know, and so like this particular one, this lady does not like tight quilting, but you need a fill back there. Obviously there has to be something. So it was like, okay, I like to just add elements because then it doesn't get tight and it fills the space, more space, I guess, Mm -hmm. and a little bit quicker. And then this, this one, I made this a really long time ago. And then years later when I quilted it, it was like, yeah, I had grand plans, but I have this edge to edge I just drew up. And uh, we're going to do it. And it's perfect. It's like the same shapes and everything. So, yeah, I think it's fine to go right over it, depending on the quilt, obviously. And then this is just, you know, they're big shapes. I like to have big shapes. And I don't like to put a whole lot of quilting on the applique because, you know, like you guys were saying before, that's the main thing. That's the forefront in an applique quilt. So I always want that to have the least quilting of anything else on the quilt so that it always stays to the forefront and progressively drops back everywhere else. So I just put simple lines, you know, just so there was something in there enough to make it not be you know, hanging or anything. But I do think too, when you decide if you're going to add quilting to your applique pieces and how much, it depends how they did it. Oh, yeah. You know, if it's turned edge and it's nice and soft, you generally need to add less. When they use that, you know, if someone uses that crunchy, hard, you know, f- fusible stuff. Yeah they really hang out because they're like a shell, you know, you can, they're stiff. And Mm -hmm. if you don't put something on it, I feel like it's really accentuated. 
more so than something that's soft. It's crunchy. Yeah. 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 And then these ones I did do a fair amount on because they were big. So I had to put something, but I still didn't want there to be too much. And I didn't want it to be too designy because the shape for me was what it was about, not the actual quilting designs, I guess. So I just did nice medium density stuff in there fairly nondescript so you don't really notice it but it's quilted yeah. then this one I did quilt the whole thing um just because it needed direction it needed to appear to do something so I had to quilt something on it to make that try to happen <laughs> That was a lot of marking on that, I can imagine. It was a lot of marking. Oh, my word. And to get all of those angles of those things going the right way I mean, as you go around the corners, my goodness. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah it wasn't fun. <laughs> I would have just gone like veered straight off the edge probably eventually. <laughs> I would have just went with the swirl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then this one, this is probably one of my favorite quilts. I mean because I needed, obviously, that's applique on there. It needed some quilting again. I don't want a whole bunch on there. And so I just put minimal on it. But then I figured I have all that space around it. I might as well change up my thread colors and try to make it be kind of part, you know, part of the actual quilt instead of just quilted. And actually the, the quilting was kind of planned before the quilt. And then I realized it had to be something round and it had to be a point. So it was Dresden. Oh, here. This is me. Um, and you'll see in my pictures, I like to make frames and I like the frames to be behind everything. So that's pretty much everything I do with applique. Yeah, well, you'll see it. But this one, I wanted the three levels. So we have the feather level, we have the frame level, and then we have that background fill. And yet, every bas every line on that basket and every petal on those flowers is ditched. Everyone. So this is only a little table runner, but it had a really big budget. So <laughs> this lady actually teaches hand applique. She's amazing. Yeah. Shows off her work. Yeah. And, and the values of her colors. Did she paint this fabric? Um, yeah, she, she does highlight the fabrics with some paint. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I was going to say she's a, a genius at picking the, <laughs> all of the hues and values for the each of the flowers, right? Well, you, she is because it's not even that much paint. Like it's mm -hmm. more detail than actual like painting of the fabric. Mm -hmm. Adding a little bit of depth here and there, right? Eh? And highlight. Yep. This is the same client. And this one, yeah, well, there was no top to this quilt. The applique was just in the center and the bottom corners because the top was like a, a fold over for the pillow. So I just made more framework around it, went in and out of all that, ditched every, every one of the appliques. Hmm. But I wanted something pulling your eye from that center out towards those corners. So oh. that the straight line pulled it through gorgeous it's sometimes hard to get quilting to show on black oh yeah really well. you gotta you, the light has to be just right and, and yeah. sit outside but this quilt was huge so yeah, you gotta work for it <laughs> <laughs> and again like this design goes in front of the coral but behind the mermaid so i mean it if you want a design to go behind the applique you have to have a little bit of planning you know so Mm -hmm. make sure it comes out the right flow on the other side <laughs> yeah well it's almost like you draw the line through everything just so that it's mm -hmm. continuous because you'd be i mean you think like from here to here is perfect but if you just do this much your eye sees that there's a break in that path mm -hmm. 
Yep. And this one was just background fill behind all the applique, but this is, this is how I do that faux. So it wasn't really ditched. It was just ditched. I, you know, as I get to it with the background fill, I kind of go along, come back and fill, go along, come back and fill. Well, and I think, my, don't you think that some quilts, you know, like I think I'm thinking like thimbleberries kind of thing. To me, that's a really folk art look. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it actually, to me anyway, looks better when you're not actually in the ditch and you just, I just freehand yeah. out around it because it adds to that. I don't know. They almost have a little bit of a whimsical. Yeah. That's what feel to them. Whimsy country, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, country. And I don't know why, but I know I go to country, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not formal. You know, this was just right. a fun quilt. So it worked. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I think for this particular quilt, you know, the applique does stand out, you know, mm -hmm. even that you didn't ditch it because of your choice of background fill. So, you know, that's a good example, like you were talking earlier about budget, you know, mm -hmm. when it's not there, this works equally well. But mm -hmm. I think it's also, you know, because there is so many other things happening other than the applique with those nine patches that you framed. So your eye goes to that. And I see you did a uh, piano border. So mm -hmm. there's a lot going cool. on. And even like just the frame around the nine patch was enough. If I had gone back in and ditched all those nine patches, it would have took it from the fun whimsy to, well, it's getting really formal, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. And this is another one, you know, like kind of fill as you go. Like I might ditch one leaf, fill around it, come up. Ditch that next. So I guess that's ditch as you go more than faux ditch. Mm -hmm. But yeah, all those big open little swirlies, they are just so that I don't have to put pebbles there. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right on. <laughs> yeah, they take up space. Yeah. yeah. And the best part about that is that it adds so much more interest. Well, even though like they're round, the applique is round, the pebbles are round. So you have the cohesion. It's not like I threw some, you know, pointy Weird. star thing in there you do you have to just keep that cohesion when you're sneaking in big spacers whatever you want to call them mm -hmm. big mm -hmm. fillers fillers yeah and this one again the frames go behind the applique it, i i just like that i like when the applique floats above your quilting And this was just simple, just ditching. I mean, like I could have gone back and put more stuff on their bellies, but again, like Ava was saying earlier, well, there's lots of layers and she just wanted it soft and together. So that worked. I love owls. I They're love owls. Too. I actually, I'm making this, The I have these owls patterns. I have like three done. So. You have this one? Yeah. I bought the pattern book. Cute. Mm -hmm. Cute. There's some cute piece to piece to L patterns too. Yeah. Out there. And I like ghosting the applique or, you know, ghost, ghost quilting of the applique. I'm running out of words here. And then I just fill the pattern up to the pretend applique. But like if that had just been the sunflower with the, the background, it would have been okay, but just Adding two more sunflowers in the quilting really made a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it when you can use the a grid that's pieced as your yeah. foundation for your quilting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Makes life quick. Like it's lines, 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 yeah. lines. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. And then this, this was a difficult quilt. Because I want to turn this and is that okay if I turn this just so it can get bigger in the well, screen? Yeah, I'm like now the perspective's off, but yeah. Sorry. <laughs> let me let me turn it once there. How about that? Sure. Yes. That's better he's because he's facing left. Now, now he's facing the right way. <laughs> she wanted the lizard all scaly. Well, sure, but it, now my forefront has gone 
to the back. Yeah. So it worked, but I didn't like quilting in reverse like that. Like, so I said, let's make vines. It looked like he's climbing up the vines. So the background is a continuation of the vines, but it's hard when you have to go in reverse with your quilting it's like that. I, I think that because your the lizard is so light in color mm -hmm. that that's probably the biggest reason that it worked. Yeah. 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 That it still stands up. Yeah. That's totally against everything my brain knows. And I'll, I put this in there because this is old. Okay, this is one of my quilts. And I guess it's when I started with my framing of things, but like, okay, let's spend all this time on applique and not frame out the applique. <laughs> let's put the frame in the background and just quilt right over to the applique. So it's like almost all background around the appliques. And had I done the framing around the appliques and not on the background, it would have, I think, looked a lot better now. But that's, that's how we yeah, learn, right? The, the frames of all the frames kind of do frame. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like the butterflies are carrying the frames around to the little flowers. But this this was how I taught myself hand applique on this quilt. And did you ditch all the little pale petals and pieces? Because I, I have my own budget. I'm okay. <laughs> You're free. I'm yeah. Free. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. It's funny when you go back and look at your own work, you criticize yourself so bad. So this, I'm again, I made frames around the applique blocks, but I took them into the pieced blocks because I wanted the pieced blocks to kind of just recede into the background. So they just have like match sticking in them so that the appliques pop forward within those frames, but still have dense background fills so that they pop up. And they only have minimal ditching in like the bigger pieces that need it. It's a busy one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of marking on that. Cause I'm like, where, where am I? <laughs> no kidding. So what did you use to mark on top of your dark fabric? School chalk. Chalk. Mm -hmm. And then this one, again, I connected the appliques with, with frames and then created a, like an inner sashing that wasn't there but it needed to be there so and i think that's I don't know, like kind of your responsibility as the quilter to see what could be there you know what i mean like that was just solid background fabric and the quilting actually broke it out into different sections mm -hmm. yeah well and i think adding all that kind of stuff makes it easier to quilt really yeah mm -hmm. you know now you have you know some guidelines or areas right. or something yeah. instead of just this expanse of background fill right yeah it's One giant to, background fill. yeah it's easier to visualize yourself you know the different sections and how you can you know work your way through the quilt if it's divided like that mm -hmm. makes more sense in your head I guess yeah like only four more hours of pebbles and then I have 18 more hours of straight lines <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the big thing too with breaking that up isn't just that, you know, like what you guys just said, but the fact that for people that are intimidated by those just endless open spaces, it makes it less scary because mm -hmm. now I can just look at this one part. And then when I've quilted this one part, I can go, okay, now what's the section that's beside it? What can I do that complements that? Because there's already something done and so on and so on. So you've got like, you know, your frame in here, we've got your pebbles, you've chosen a different texture for in this space. And then because this is broken apart, it only just, it leads you to the design decision to go, okay, I'm going to piano key around side, you know, outside of the border. So it, it kind of just helps you through that process instead of feeling so overwhelmed by all That's, that nothingness. Very, yeah, very true. Because if somebody brings you a quilt with borders, your brain's like, okay, this year, this year, this year. But when it's that solid fabric, it's just like, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They're a good challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this one is just, there's little, little frames in between the appliques just because, and again, being overcritical of myself, they're not really big enough because some of the feathers in the background fill are bigger than those little, little framed areas, but it worked at that moment. 
<laughs> so, and that's again is those big frillies that fill up space more feathers and, and those big curlies because and then a pattern piano key on the outside mm -hmm. so is this your quilt or a client quilt Client quilt i super love if she's listening <laughs> i super love this um feather swag mm -hmm. like that's like a quilted element like having that teardrop in the center and then the feathers fanning out from that center on the arc and she made an applique of that it's awesome i yeah. love that and all the yeah those fabrics match the little plates mm -hmm. yeah i had fun on this quilt oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah gorgeous ah okay this means that we're at the almost at the end <laughs> when i go last <laughs> Uh, um, I, I chose, uh, a couple of quilts that had some challenges to show you guys, um, um, things maybe I did a little bit differently than some, this, this one was called, uh, I think pretty little pots and all of the postcard sizes are appliqued on. And then the wool appliques done on top of that. And then right on top of, and it is linen on the background. So the quilting shows super nice, but I had a challenge right away when I started with this one, because if you can see in the background, I wanted my background quilting on the back piece of fabric to be like all horizontally straight lines. Um, because what else do you put in that space, right? Like it's weird, it's strange space and your quilting can't be too large scale. So then I knew that I would have to separate this frame out with a little channel around that so that the, the postcard itself wouldn't run into the background. But then what happened when I started working on it, and on this picture on the right, you can see um, the applique stitches are really, really far apart. Yeah. And then on the left hand side, you can see this little fold here in the corner. And then again, the applique stitches are like super far apart. So sometimes we actually have to stitch on top of the edges of the applique. So um, this is a close up of that same quilt. Uh, one of those postcard pieces and uh, I did Jody's little trick where I just angled in instead of having to do a stop and start mm -hmm. uh, I just angled in on the corners and it it really gives them a nice kind of like picture frame mm -hmm. kind of look but um, I, I told my client I am going to have to um, stitch right on top of the edge it's like literally a uh, 16th of an inch or something like that just on the inside edge and then the same thing on top of the pots mm -hmm. And it's better than watching the applique pop off. Yeah. Well, that's just it, right? So you get a quilt that's mailed to you from across the country and you you know, they want this special work done on it. And it's like, okay, now if you just brush against it, I'm worried about something coming loose, right? And so I, if it goes to come, I've seen judges scrape their nail on the edge of hand appliques to see if it lifts. And I'm like, oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Just in case. With really tight stitches. Why are you being so violent with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that one I did all the all around the edges, and like sometimes we make those decisions because we have to, not because we want to, or think that that would that's going to look good. So this is our design choice. Sometimes our design choices or the way we stitch things is just purely out of necessity as that's things happen. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I oh, ran into this problem. Now I have to work around that and do something else mm -hmm. so um and then i thought um i would just share with you guys what my favorite two um tools for using applique most of the time i do it without um, a tool but sometimes there's uh some pieces where they're really intricate and you want to be really really careful and maybe the applique is really high contrast with the background and you want to make sure you don't accidentally stitch over top of something so when i first started doing applique i used the deloa's applique and that's the one on the right hand side um, and your, your hopping foot goes right inside that little hook, but you've got to stop, lift up your needle, put the, put it in there and then lower your needle back down and then stitch. And then as soon as you're finished using it, you have to do that same thing, lift it up, take it out and then start again. Um, I graduated up to using this one, which I really love because it's got these little cutouts in the corner, like a hugger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so literally when I'm going around the applique, I can hold it like this and I can, um, because it's got a straight edge on it, I can right away turn it to do a ditch straight line, or I can just toss it to the side and, and, and keep going. So like 
when you're using one of those kinds of tools, you're almost like hugging the needle with like one hand on the handlebar or the handle of the machine and the other hand on the tool. And you're kind of like hugging to me anyway, I feel like I'm hugging the needle going inwards, but then moving at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then because you've got a hand on the quilt, you've got lots of control. Right. So I'm, um, I'm working on a new one, Sharon. I'll send it to you. Oh, I'm cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, so that on the picture on the right just shows you like how I would hold that tool to use it. But on the left, I wanted to show you as well, because like this piece of applique, it's the same quilt, by the way, mm -hmm. has these little baubles. These you see that little embroidery that yeah. comes all the way out. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, how do you know how far to go in to some of those shapes? Because if you don't really, if you don't cleanly ditch, sometimes you've got areas that are popping up and some things that are laying flat and it looks weird. So on some of that stuff, I actually will go right inside. So I stitched like, can you see my mouse, my cursor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I stitched right over top of that all the way around. So that little bobble sticks out and it's super cute, but then it's tidied um, and still okay. ditched instead of going around and then try to bounce around it. So sometimes. Well, and uh, that's actually a point we didn't bring up. And one of the reasons why I ditch everything first and go into the applique especially the wool because I use the finer thread I use at least a 60 but generally a hundred weight thread so you can go through some of those you know um, stitches that were those embroidered stitches and it's not gonna take away mm -hmm. and you know then later when I do the background I switch to a regular you know so, uh, weight thread mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah it helps just to disguise some of those little things right mm -hmm. um and karen this, these pictures are going to bug you because they're all crooked <laughs> 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 i thought about them when i was saving i was like oh karen's gonna kill me they're all crooked and skewed and wonky um i i wanted to to share this picture we touched on a little bit about talking about this before but i wanted to talk specifically about um, the scale of the quilting compared to the scale of the applique. Um, and Karen started to talk a little bit about that she, on the blue background where I commented on that feather swag, you were unhappy with the scale of the quilting to the, the frame. Those motif. little frames I put in were smaller than some of my quilting elements. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And it gets challenging because sometimes some applique is really, really tiny. Mm -hmm. So in order for the applique to still be the star, your applique, your background has to be proportionately smaller um, for that to come out. So it's, um, it can be, it can be challenging, but um, one of the things that I also, I don't have a photo of it, but there are some clients that you'll have that they've done applique like this, but they don't want dense quilting uh, in the background. So it's like, how do you get that to, to stand out? Um, if you do a, cross hatch straight lines is so much less busy looking than swirls and pebbles and flowers and, and, and feathers and things like that. So you can get away with more dense cross hatching than what you might think because it's just straight line. So it doesn't look like it's super, super busy, right? But just keeping in mind, scale of your quilting needs to be smaller than the scale of your applique. And that's just another example of that. And then sometimes, you know, figuring out wh wh how much do you leave? Like, do you quilt inside those little guys? Do you look at them first? You can always go back in and add more, right? Mm -hmm. You do the, the bonchi test. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, this one, um, I think I have a picture to show a before, right, I do. I have a before and after ditching. And Ava brought that up when we were talking about her quilts, about um, like how much cleaner and tidier and everything looks once the shape is ditched. And some of the spaces in the applique are big enough to put some detail inside. But as soon as you do that, the area around it goes up, right? And especially if it's hand applique, like you can see the tiny applique stitches so around the edge. That comes up and now is a vulnerable area for that judge to go by and pick it, right? Well, and another reason I don't always ditch first, if I'm doing an insanely dense background fill, and this is like the perfect picture. So you ditched your little pink one. Mm -hmm. if, if I was doing a dense background fill in that area around it, it can sometimes pull your ditch just slightly away. Mm -hmm. 
from the applique and then you have this open spot. So yep. it, it's a toss up. It, it all depends on how the piecing and the applique was done, but that's why sometimes I won't ditch until after. Afterwards, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, then this picture is just showing that same thing, but then ditched around the outside edge and all of a sudden you have all that clear definition. It's all perfect and neat now. <laughs> yeah, the ditching, it's, to me, it's just always worth it. Yeah. And then that's a picture of the block. And, and Karen, do you remember, I actually um, texted you with a picture of this one going, how much more quilting do I put in here? Because I did quite busy quilting in the background already. We had this geometric sashing in between and then <clears throat> all of the busy quilting in behind the background. But some of the fabric just looked like it was like sagging mm -hmm. or like if you ran your hand over it, it would actually move. That, that's so, the best test when when you release that the the tension on your rollers and you let it just hang if the fabric is moving it needs more yeah. it needs more yeah mm -hmm. and that's like that's a, a great rule of thumb mm -hmm. to go by so and yeah, then it was like, oh, when all the tension is on the on the rollers nothing's moving so you know. <laughs> that's right and then if you relax it it's like yeah. oh i need to go back there and and do some nip and tuck yeah. Well, but for me, I learned I better need to walk away for a while because I have a tendency to over quilt. Over -quilt. So I'm going to step away. Yeah. Am I sure before I get committed to it? <laughs> so when I, 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 I had my hairdressing license. It was the first thing I did when I graduated from high school. So I got my hairdressing ticket. And I, the lady I learned from, she said, you can always take more off, but you can't put it back on. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> So I kind of had that same philosophy with my quilt again, always go back in and add more, right? Leave yeah. the sashing to the last, because if you quilt it first, it'll be overdone, right? Stuff like that. Um, it, it was interesting that Karen brought a, a picture of um, that, uh, was it a leopard gecko or not? It wasn't a leopard gecko. Mm -hmm. It was some sort of a lizard, right? Lizard. About having to quilt that down, but not wanting it to <laughs> like fall back into the background. And this was the exact same um, kind of scenario with this wreath quilt, except, um, I did, I did have to go in and quilt all of that. I mean, we probably got six inches across of width of space around that wreath mm -hmm. and she hand pieced all of those little hexagons together. So it absolutely hundred percent needed some quilting, but that we still want the wreath to be the star. So I did go in and quilt all of that um first and then I took it off the frame and cut all the way around the outside edge um some people do it with just a layer of batting I just find that's too stretchy for me I've tried it and I just don't feel comfy doing it but um you can do it with just batting but I just put a piece of extra fabric on the back and then I sat with my Karen K Buckley scissors and just trimmed as close as I could all the way around the edge and then I loaded it back down and a quilted the second time only around the outside. So no quilting in here on the second pass, yeah. except it's quilted, but it's, it's still forward. Um, but it is a lot of extra work, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, I did say to my client, are you ready? Because if you want this to be done, I mean, this is gonna take me X number of hours extra. Um, and totally, totally worth it. I mean, that, that sucker, like you look at the shadow there, it stands mm -hmm. right up. Well, that's with the lizard. She's like, I want little tiny pebble scales. And I'm like, oh, even with your punto. Eh. <laughs> you know? yep. Yeah. I did that with my leather dragon. I quilted the scales on the dragon and then this exact same method. And I cut it away and then loaded it the second time and just quilted around the body of it. Um, and I did learn that from uh, Kathy Wiggins. It's uh, her, her technique is called, she calls it quilt before quilting, but you can like, I mean, I've heard people refer to it as other things as well, like fake drapanto, mm -hmm. but it's clever, but time consuming. Oh yeah. yeah. And that's the difference between your quilt and a client budget quilt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be, or one that they're like, you know what, there is no budget. I want this to be, um, you know, showstopper. I want this to have a ribbon on it or something. Yeah. Right. So well, we had some awesome pictures. I hope yeah. everybody learned um, tons of stuff. I know that every time we do one of these episodes, I learn something from each of you guys. So I love that. So um, share us some tips and tricks if you want to in the comments on the video. Uh, show us some of the applique work that you've done. If you've got maybe a suggestion, 
that we didn't talk about, we'd love to see that too. Mm -hmm. And uh, if nobody has anything else to share, nope. we will see you all next time on the next episode of Latest Thread. Take care. Bye. Bye.